Hey guys, Lockster42. Well, I've been uh, doing a lot of hand painting lately, just something a little bit different. I'm still got the airbrush, but just thought I'd go back a bit and uh, you know realize that not everything was uh, shot with an airbrush during the war. So this is part of my Fall of the Reich um, group build with Panzermeister 36, and this old uh, converted Volkswagen. I have had this kit probably for 14 years. It's been kicking around, half finished lost the um, lost the front window so it'll be shot out and it uh, never really got painted up so we're gonna do a quick little tutorial here guys on hand painting so the paint we're gonna use here is the AK interactive um, not even gonna try and take a run at that German but it's a it's a late war a German green RAL 6011 and we're gonna try one of these Citadel brushes I wasn't too high on them but we're gonna give it a whirl so the first thing you do is you decant a little bit of the paint in a, in a dish or something and the secret is is using a very fairly thin wet paint. This is kind of a neat profile. I've never done one like this. I've just dropped the, uh, dropped the uh, camera on the bench and here we go. So the secret is, is to use a much thinner paint than you think you need. So you can draw the lines on or you can just freehand and I'm kind of a I'm kind of a freehand kind of guy here so we just kind of go like that. And the big thing it is is just to kind of you keep the paints thin. It may take a couple of coats. If you're getting coverage in one coat, your paint's probably too thick. And I really don't like these brushes. You see how soft they are? They just don't seem to hold the paint all that well. especially late war you really can get away with a lot of uh, variations I think this is an, I can't even remember which kit this is. I've had it for so long. I think it was one of the last orders I made from Squadron Mail Order. That's a long, long time ago. I remember ordering stuff way back in the late 70s, early 80s and we'd actually have to drive in to the major center which is about a 35 mile drive in to the customs office at the post office to pick up my models that came up out of Texas that's the way they used to do it with uh, and pay the duty on it so as you can see guys as long as you keep your paint fairly thin and use a reasonably good quality brush I'm not sure if I'd want to hand brush say a, a 132 scale Eurofighter or something like that or maybe a, a modern jet but on something like this, you know, it doesn't matter if you get some brush lines in it because you know what? We want, we want to go for realism. Now keep in mind too that a 35th scale guy, he may be standing up here. So it's hard to say whether he's going to get the roof. I doubt if he's going to paint the roof. If I was doing the camouflage scheme, I don't know if I'd paint the roof. 
but we'll see how it goes here maybe we'll just say well that's as far as we could reach was right up to there now this brush I'm using here is really nice for putting in little fine lines but I don't like the way it see how soft it is you see how it holds its shape afterwards I don't like that in a brush I like a brush just to be you know to hold its shape and not bend over and be so soft and wonky but for nice little for outlining these uh, these brushes don't seem to be too bad just for something as simple as outlining and putting a line on they're okay for filling in eh, maybe not so much now you can even if you really want to get fancy you can uh, cut your edges in if you want a really hard edge line you can cut your edges in with a paintbrush and then fill them in afterwards with your um, airbrush this is a very light pale green here but you see how when you put it in this brush keep takes the band I don't like that in a brush so as you can see there's no real great rocket science in hand painting you know, the paint the, the the main thing you need to remember guys is when you're hand painting a kit and you're doing a camouflage scheme like this keep your keep your paint thin and do multiple coats if there's any secret to hand brushing that's what it's going to be thin coats thin paint and multiple coats Here we'll revisit this. I'll come back once I get this green um, green in, guys, and then we'll put a little bit of red brown so it'll pop a little bit more on the on the yellow surface. All right. So our man painting the, the Jeep, or the um, little Volkswagen here. He's gotten bored. He just wants to go have some schnapps. So the hell that he just wants to get this job done as quick as he can. Yesterday he was peeling potatoes. Now today he's painting. Uh, Peyton Volkswagens. He's not having a great month. Ivan's knocking at the door. He's out of schnapps. The vodka's not very good. And he just wants to get back home. See his frow line and get this damn paint job finished up. It's one thing we kind of seem to forget. At least I'm bad that way. Is that everything has to be just perfect. Well, not everybody who painted these vehicles in wartime worried too much about whether or not they were going to be perfect or not you can a lot of times you can just see that alright the damn thing's done that's all I wanted to do I'm good let's get going so instead of worrying about the perfect textbook paint job on every single vehicle we do we need to keep in mind that not all crews really give two rats butts about how well the paint looks as long if there's paint on all right we're good we're golden bye and that's kind of what i wanted to uh show here something that you know he's putting on the big broad stripes of green and then he's like you know what i'm done let's just get this damn thing over with i want to go drink i want to go fool around i want to get the hell out of here like i said ivan's knocking at the door i'm done this is a good enough paint job so that's what I was going for this, is just something done real quick, throw some color on, okay, we're done. The broad green lines took too damn long, I'm not messing around anymore, so let's just throw the, the chocolate brown on. But anyway, these AK Interactive uh, paints flow really nice. Um, they're kind of in between, say, a Vallejo Model Air and a Model Color in consistency. 
They're not as thick as the Vallejo model color, but they're not as thin as the Model Air. So they brush really nice. You don't need to thin them down too much. They've got a nice, good color density. These are a nice paint. Now I understand that um, AK has gone the way of the dodo bird. There was a falling out beat between Mig Jimenez and Mr. Vallejo or something like that. And I think um, Mig has his ammo brand paint now. So that's where we're at with that, guys. So anyway, just a quick, simple little tutorial on hand painting and brushing. And uh, some thoughts on camouflage. Remember, guys, they don't always have to be friggin' perfect and by the textbook. A lot of times, uh, remember German paints were generally sent out to the field in a paste. They were thinned down with water, with diesel fuel, with kerosene, with gasoline. So the color densities and hues are going to be different from uh, one model, one tank to the next, one vehicle to the next. So next time you're going to see this little puppy, it's going to be weathered up in my Follow the Reich diorama. So later guys, take care, thanks for watching, appreciate it.